Hello everyone, uh, my name is Lina Mutlaqsada. I'm a research associate at um, Cincinnati Children's Hospital. Uh, my talk is about the role of a spatial risk from masking in predicting listening difficulty in children with uh, central auditory processing disorders. Um, so auditory processing disorder indicates difficulty processing sounds in the central auditory nervous system. Um, APD may be diagnosed due to reported listening difficulty uh, with reduced behavioral and cognitive function, um, but normal um, hearing, uh, normal conventional audiogram. Um, there is um, legal agreement as to what qualifies as APD and LID, how they differ, and um, which tests are appropriate for diagnosis and management. Um, recent work suggests that um, LID or APD is preliminarily um, dependent on cognitive, um, including listening problems. However, there is also evidence that a deficit in a spatial um, hearing and um, difficulty understanding the speech in noise uh, may indicate a disorder of the central auditory system. So um, this study aimed to um, isolate a cognition from auditory contribution to spatial free, uh, release from masking, um, which is one of the uh, auditory abilities essential for auditory scene analysis um, and speech perception in noisy multi-talker environments. So um, in this study, we had uh, 17 children with listening difficulty um, defined by either professional diagnosis of APD or parent report of uh, listening difficulty. Um, we also had 18 typically developing children as a control group. Uh, participants were 8 to 17 years old um, and mean age was um, 11.4 years old. 63% of them were male. Um, we um, did standard and extended high frequency audiometry. Um, as you can see, um, both groups had um, normal um, hearing um, at a standard frequency range and only few of them had extended high frequency hearing loss. Um, we also um, compared the speech reception thresholds on two tasks, um, um, a spatial advantage measure of the listeners, um, which is a speech uh, sentence in noise test. test. Um, it uh, listeners had four um, conditions. Uh, for the purpose of this presentation, we only um, um, talk about these two conditions, a co-located uh, condition known as low Q that both target and maskers uh, are presented from front speakers, uh, also known as a head condition, um, talker and um, target and masker. Um, coming from a uh, zero azimus. And then we have a spatial advantage condition in which target is spatially separated from the masker. Uh, maskers are uh, located at plus and minus 90 azimus. Um, for the sound field digital noise test, we have similar condition, um, a head condition uh, in which both digits and uh, multi-talker bubble coming from front speaker and then um, side condition or uh, spatially separated condition that uh, maskers are um, spatially separated from target. They are presented uh, at uh, minus and plus 90 degrees azimus. So um, as uh, you probably know, sound field digital noise or digital noise test is much easier or cognitively less demanding compared to listeners, um, which is a sentence in noise test. So for digital noise, we have a um, sequence of three digits, zero to nine, uh, presented um, against um, multi-talker bubble noise. And um, 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 digits, sequence of three digits, um, and presented in random order makes the test a lot easier than um, listeners, low Q and special advantage tasks. So here we have results. 
um, both LID and TD groups had um, better speech reception thresholds on both tasks when the noise was spatially separated. So this is showing um, sound field digit in noise speech uh, reception threshold. As you can see, 90 um, condition had a lot better speech reception threshold. More negative means better hearing than a head condition. And then here, when we go from low Q to spatial advantage, from a co-located condition to a spatially separated condition, the ZS scores drastically improve. Um, despite similar performance at co-located condition in sound field digital noise test, um, LID children um, had significantly poorer um, uh, speech reception threshold than TD children at um, spatially separated condition at 90 condition. Um, and this um, results in um, significantly poorer spatial release from masking um, for the digital noise test. However, um, SRM or condition in um, listeners task or special advantage measure of listeners um, was not significantly different between the two groups, LID and TD groups. So overall, um, this is showing that children with LID have significantly poorer ability to dip differentiate target from background noise when the task was less demanding, was much easier. Um, so digital noise test compared to the listeners. Um, it's worth mentioning that there was a significant correlation between sound field digital noise SRM and listeners uh, spatial advantage. So these two tasks were significantly correlated. However, listeners uh, spatial advantage um, 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 was not significantly, the score was not significantly di different across groups. So to wrap up, um, um, as um, I just uh, mentioned, sound field digital noise was more sensitive to LID than listeners, so the task was less cognitively demanding um, and I uh, was measuring um, uh, the ability like bottom up um, um, auditory perception. Um, and a related difference in SRM between LID and TD groups on both tasks um, provides a long sought evidence that brain mechanisms prelimi preliminarily serving bottom up auditory perception may contribute to listening difficulties in children with APD. So thanks for um, listening. I'm happy to answer um, your questions.